everyone at home or wherever you happen to be. I'm Miss Jamie and welcome back to another Art Explorations for Kids. So today we're going to focus on creating an image with a pumpkin and we're going to give it a lot of personality. So this lesson is entitled Pretty as a Pumpkin and we're going to go ahead and get started with our Jumbo Jet Black Pencil and start working on our first pumpkin here. We're going to do three. And I'm going to start by just creating this oval kind of near the center of our paper. And draw light because we're going to go back in and erase some of the lines that we don't need later on. And you know, when you look at a pumpkin, it's not perfectly round you have those little divisions and they create little bumps when you're looking from the side of the pumpkin at the top and at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and imitate that by bringing up a curve at the top here and creating a curve around and down to the bottom. And it's sort of like you're creating an elongated almond shape. And then we're going to repeat that same curved shape off to the side here, to the left. Bring it down to meet that middle elongated almond shape. And repeat it off to the right. And then we're going to basically leave our outer line the same but just create a little bit more of a bump on top. And a little bit of the bump on the bottom. And a bump on the top on the right. Going around. And a little bit of that bump on the bottom. So now we're going to go ahead and create our side pumpkins. We're just going to create a half circle and have it meet down here at the bottom of this other pumpkin. And then a half circle off to the right, meeting down at the bottom of our middle pumpkin here. And then we're gonna go in, and again, like we did with this one, just add another little division a soft curve down to the bottom. And add another soft curve on your right pumpkin. Pull down to the bottom. Now, when you go pick up a pumpkin, either um, from the grocery store or you know from the field, oftentimes you'll have the stem still hanging out at the top. So we're gonna go ahead and add that and you'll notice that they're not uh, perfectly symmetrical. They're not uh, perfect rectangles. They have some imperfections to them. So I'm going to start by making um, the stem of my uh, pumpkin a little wider at the bottom, curve up to the top, and maybe a little jagged where the stem was cut and then come back down, maybe make it a little wider again. So from my left pumpkin, I think I'm going to have the stem just point out some, make it a little jagged where it was cut, and make it wide again as it would touch behind here at the top of this uh, pumpkin, smaller pumpkin behind our main pumpkin. And I'm going to create that same sort of design so we'll have a little bit of symmetry with the stem over here. Thinner at the top and wider coming down. Now we want to give our pumpkin some personality. So we're going to go in and give it a set of eyes, nose, and a mouth. And we have our center shape right here. 
that we began with. We're going to come around and create a rounded triangular shape. And then opposite that, on the other side to the right, create another rounded triangular shape. And because when you cut into a pumpkin, it's not, the pumpkin is not two dimensional, you'll notice that there's a wall in the pumpkin, it's a little thick. We're gonna add that detail in here too, so you can see the inside side of where we've cut into the pumpkin just by pulling the side, the left side down here and filling in. And that's gonna give it some depth because we're showing the wall of the inside of the pumpkin. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here on the right eye and fill in. And then we're gonna come down just a little bit between the two eyes and create an upside down triangle. All right, and now we're gonna make a grin on our pumpkin. So, you can make your grin look however you want, if you want a spookier grin, a goofier grin. I'm gonna go just for you know, partially cheerful, partially goofy. Maybe give him um, a couple of goofy little teeth sticking out. So I'm gonna start on the far left, pull in, come down, give him a little rectangular tooth go across again, right over, and about right under his right eye. Give him a little rectangular tooth, and then come up to where it would meet his cheek on the right side. And I'm gonna pull back down. Maybe I'll bring a tooth here, another rectangle. Another tooth here, up, rectangle, and then up to meet his left cheek. And again, pumpkins have that thick wall, so we want to show that depth. So I'm going to come in, and where the teeth are, just bring it in a little bit, and up, and color that in. And so now you can see that we've created the side of the tooth and um, helped to emphasize that against the um, front plane of what is a rectangle. So then we're going to repeat that for each of the teeth to give them a three-dimensional look. And it just takes those two lines straight back and then down following the curve of the tooth that you've already made and filling in. So now that we have everything outlined um, and you have your and you have your pumpkin's character set out, uh, remember your smile or grin or grimace didn't have to turn out exactly like mine. This is your pumpkin and you're giving it the personality you want it to have. Um, we're going to go ahead and erase some of those lines that we don't need, like these that are going through the eyes and through the mouth. We don't want those anymore. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take those away before we begin coloring. So you can see that we also still have this oval that we started off in the very beginning to use 
as the base for our pumpkin and we want to go ahead and get rid of these softer lines too. So before we start coloring, we want to go in and add some little bits of straw for, the, for these pumpkins to be settled on. Um, so we're just going to go in and this can be, this placement can be wherever you would like it to be. Um, I just would like to create a ground plane so that the straw goes off to the side and we have just a few little pieces um, sticking out here and there under our uh, pumpkins. You'll see what I mean as I start going in here. We'll just make a little wavy line and then come back and make it thicker at the base. And if you look at straw or um, oftentimes in fall decorations, they'll use things such as um, corn husks and um, leaves. They're not even, they're not perfect. So don't worry about trying to make things perfectly symmetrical or even. Um, this is all very natural and organic. So whatever you do, you can't go wrong. I'm going to add a piece coming out to the front here. And then maybe he has a little friend coming over to the side. And then this one's going to come out to the front. And remember, just keep repeating those. Um, wavy shapes, occasionally a jagged form too, just to give it a little bit of a unique composition. Now we're going to have some coming from behind the pumpkin over here. Maybe there's one that's a rebel sticking out at the top here. And then I'm just going to keep my straw going off here to the side so that it goes off the page and we've finished our ground plane. Oh, I, I think I want one right here too. That was looking like a an empty spot, like it, it wanted something, a friend there. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and finished outlining, we can go ahead and start coloring. So we're gonna take our Cezanne colored pencils and you do not have to use the exact same colors that I'm going to be using, but I do really love this orange. I think I'm going to start off with this one. It's the 003 in the set. And I'm going to start by coloring in the very first pumpkin that we drew. And Notice how I'm coloring. I have my hand back here instead of right up on the pencil. So this way I have better control. And by better control, I mean I have the ability to put down a more solid base of color. And I can also uh, determine where that color is going more easily. And it will also allow you to color longer because the closer you are to the front of that pencil the more tired you get the more easily you get fatigued trying to color for longer periods of time 
Also be sure to color in the direction of your lines. Notice that I am going along the curved lines I've created of my pumpkin. And then just gives it uniformity and in the end is going to make it look really nice and cohesive. So now that we have our color down on our main pumpkin, I'm going to go ahead and switch focus to the pumpkins in the background. And I am going to use pencil 022. And it's a more of a yellowy tint, but I want these pumpkins to just be like background element pumpkins. So this will be a softer color and help push them more to the back and help our, our um, pumpkin with the, the real personality pop and stand out from these other guys. Again, same technique. Holding the pencil a little farther back and going with the lines that we've already created. finished coloring in our background pumpkins and now it's time to add the stem colors. So pick any green you like. I'm going to go for a little bit of a darker green for, um, for our foreground pumpkin and it's 009, the pencil that I'm using. And again, just making the same strokes, holding the pencil farther back so you have more control. And continuously going in the same direction to make sure that you have a nice even coverage and cohesive uh, line work. If your color coverage is a little bit splotchy or you notice that you'll have some darker areas or some lighter areas, that's perfectly okay. Uh, it gives your pumpkin more character. And if you look at pumpkins in nature, they're not all perfectly just one color, one flat plane of color. You'll have little spots and indentations and things. So 
this is just giving your um, pumpkin that extra little bit of character that you see out when you're going to pick your own from the patch or from the grocery store. So I'm going to pick up 010 and make a little bit of a lighter stroke here in the back for these, the two back uh, pumpkins. And come over here and do the same for this guy. So now I'm going to color in the hay and I'm going to use the 014 Saison pencil. And your coloring technique for this one can be a little bit more sporadic, if you like. If you look at bales of hay, you have bits going um, all over the place. So you can have a, a little bit more freedom coloring in your uh, pieces of straw. Or if you're considering these to be um, corn husks or leaves, you know, those are very fibrous and have all sorts of textures to them. And feel free to incorporate those in here as well. Alright, and now that we're done with our straw, all we have to do is color in the light inside our pumpkin. So I'm going to pick a super bright yellow. So I'm going to use a pencil 015 and just come in and make his eyes, nose, and grin super bright because there's a candle in there illuminating the pumpkin from inside. Now that we're done coloring in our image, our final step is to go back with our jet black pencil and go over these lines um, that are a little bit lighter and that's really going to make our image pop and then we'll have our final piece.
Okay, so now we've completed uh, the basic lesson and we have our jack-o'-lantern ready to go. If you are happy with your uh, artwork where it is now, then feel free to stop. And if you would like to continue on with the advanced portion of this lesson, we're gonna begin that in just one moment. So welcome back to the advanced portion of our jack-o'-lantern piece. We are now going to start adding more details uh, into what we've already created. And as we discussed before, you know, a pumpkin is not a two-dimensional object. You see these um, peaks and valleys here that go around the pumpkin. So we're just going to go in and add a little bit of shadow before we start adding some vines and extra elements. So I'm going to go ahead and take, let's say, I'm going to go for a little bit of a, a red and I'm going to use 001. And just where there's this crease here and here. I'm going to come in and just add a little bit of extra shading to show that there is a little bit of a shadow there. That that's more of a rounded area and not just a flat plane. And I'm just doing this subtly. You can um, make it as dark as you'd like. If you would like to show that separation a little bit more, make it a little darker shadow, make it more dramatic. It's perfectly up to you. And then I'm going to start on this next crease here. And again, continue using the technique for drawing that we did in the first portion of the lesson, holding that pencil farther towards the back for control and following along the same lines that you already have set down so as not to create um, what will later look like a messy um, piece. I'm going to come over to this other crease now and work on it. And notice that I'm working from inside the crease and then working out and making this look, this, um, shadow just a little bit softer as it gets further out to the side here. with that central pumpkin we're going to add some more depth to our back pumpkin and I think I'm going to use a little bit 
of orange to do the shadows for that one. So because these two pumpkins fall behind this one, that's our main pumpkin, we are going to have a cast shadow come onto this pumpkin and then we're also going to have the shadow that's created by this hill here just showing up in the crease back here. So if you can just follow along with me, I will show you what I mean. So the cast shadow here coming off this pumpkin. We're just going to do exactly what we did before working with those creases starting a little darker at the edge and then getting softer as you go towards the outside. If you feel like you haven't made your shadows dark enough or you would like to make them darker, you can go back in and um, apply a little bit more pressure and make them a little dark, a little bit more dark. And this is your piece, so whatever makes you uh, happiest when you are creating this, it's the look you're going for. We're just giving you the tools to work with. And see, already we're having more of a three-dimensional image just by simply adding in a second color and creating a little soft gradient going out, adding uh, another tonal value. So we'll repeat that over here on our right pumpkin. Create that cast shadow and softening it as it goes out. Now that we've created three dimensions in our uh, pumpkin setup here, I'm going to come in to the straw that we have down here at the bottom and just where the edges meet, just give a little bit of a shadow where they may be going over and under each other. Like the straw here is going under the pumpkin, that'll be a cast shadow onto the straw or the corn leaves, whichever you have um, decided to incorporate into your picture. And now that we're done adding more depth to our picture, we can go ahead and break out our acrylics and start having some fun with the vines. So now we're going to go ahead and start working on our vines. And here I have the four round Creative Inspirations brush that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to go ahead and tap into my middle green here. 
And you don't have to use the same colors that I do, but these are just the colors that I like to use. So I'm gonna start up here at the top of my pumpkin after I've made sure that I've gotten plenty of paint on my brush. You can see there's not a huge glob, but then there's also not just a little a speck. I have plenty on there to work with. And you're just gonna make some fun swirls. And if you visited a pumpkin patch, you know that the pumpkin vines go in every which way. So there is absolutely no wrong way to do this. I'm going to come to the back pumpkin now and add some vines. And you can add vines however you think best complements your picture. Let's see, I'm going to come over to this pumpkin now. And sometimes you may have difficulty completing a full swirl and you can see that what I'm doing is starting my vine starting to go around and then picking the end point of that swirl and coming around to meet the other side of the vine and something else fun you can add Sometimes vines have these almost little spring-like bits to them. So maybe you want to come over here and just with the tip of your brush, just, ooh, 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 just like that. Very simple. Okay. And I think I'm going to add another one of those fun little springs up here. Uh, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. More of a tip there. Okay, and we're going to add now just a couple of leaves. And a pumpkin's leaves fan out. So I'm going to start with just a little stem coming out here. And a lot of pumpkin leaves have very unique shapes. So you don't have to be concerned about getting a perfect pumpkin leaf shape. They're all unique. And then I think I'm going to add another one over here. stem. Okay. And I'm going to clean my brush off make sure I get all that green out of the brush to make sure I don't have any cross-contamination of color and a good way to double check that is to get a paper towel and just run your brush across there and as you can see it's come out clean so I've gotten all the green out of that brush and I can go ahead and start working with my next color so I'm going to dip into the yellow and because there's some light coming out of the um, holes in our jack-o'-lantern. I'm just going to add a few highlights 
onto these leaves. Just to show where the candlelight is hitting. And if you'd like, you can also go back and add in a few highlights in the vines. And just go along the strokes you've already made. And so now that we've completed our vines, you can stop here, or we have even one more final step to add extra glow to our pumpkins. Okay, and just to give our pumpkin a little bit of an added glow, we're just gonna take one of the yellow um, gallery soft pastel sticks and just gently apply it around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And you may want to be careful about uh, letting your pastel brush against the pencil that you have down, just to make sure that you don't have any of the black smudging into your yellow. And then I'm gonna go in and add either the white or the second lightest. Do the same thing, just a little bit to highlight. And you're gonna go in with your finger, and this will be fun, and just smudge it out. Just like the light is really radiating from inside that lantern. And remember, you don't have to press down hard the soft pastels move around really well on their own and stick really well to the paper and to your fingers. So be, be careful what you touch once you're done smudging this so as to not get it all over your clothes or the cat. And now we have our finished jack-o'-lantern piece. Thank you guys so much for following along with me. I hope you had as much fun following this project as I did uh, working on it with you. And I hope to see you on the next Art Explorations for Kids.